I know we wouldn't end up in the river. <laughs> that is so unfunny. <laughs> By the way, that's a piece of um, reality TV drama right there that would be a money maker. The yeah. Whole, the whole. Do we have to. We can have them like dragging the car out of the oh, we, canal they, or whatever. They've got the news footage. They, oh. They filmed it. I've got a video of it dragging out from my phone. Yeah, that's reality TV candy right there. So, I said all problems are solved at three margaritas. Yeah. Case in point, when the chef moved to town, and we got him early on, which actually changed my whole thought process of this restaurant. Uh, just because of where he was at in his life and what he wants to accomplish, etc., I never dreamed we'd get you know, what I would call a top 100 chef. And then once we got him on board, and we had to buy him a house to do it, but, uh, or facilitate, I should say. But for now, it's still ours. Uh, you know, then we said, okay, if we're gonna do this, we're, re we're you know, we're really gonna do this. And then Dan and Mark, and we're talking to uh, other talent, and we're like, we, we gotta have a place for these people to live. Because there aren't that many houses available in North Platte. You just can't go buying houses. So I'm in three, in, in three margaritas talking to Enrique. And he goes, hey, the lady that manages this apartment building right over here, uh, she's sitting down here. And uh, she was upset because the guy that owns it in Colorado, this, color, this apartment building here, was selling it. And she thought he would not be, you know, or that the proposed buyer was not going to be a good guy, etc. So anyway, we sit there and, and haggle about it. She texts the owner and I don't know. She goes, no, it's not a signed deal yet. And there's a five plex over here that are all two bedroom uh, townhouses. And I said, oh yeah, that's, that'd be really better. So finally, go home, go to bed, wake up the next morning. I've forgotten all about it. At 11, I get a text from this number I don't know. It says, are you still planning on coming to look at the apartments last tonight? Or the, today at 11.30? And it all comes flooding back to me and I'm like, oh yeah, holy shit. We bought two apartment complex and a fiveplex last night. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's the fiveplex. Uh, we've got one empty unit that we'll we have. Back. Yeah, we'll come back. And uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was crazy. So we've got one unit almost completely remodeled. Mark uh, has first dibs on that. The next one will be to Dan, and uh, away we'll go. But there you go. There's an example of solving all your problems at, at three margaritas. That's awesome. Yeah, the one way is up and down, and that's what you did as a child. Is you know you were in your car, driving by, cruising, waving at babes. Yeah, we had the same thing. In yeah. Canada. Right uh, by the police station. Yeah, we circled around the cop shop. Keggers yep, right, right by there. the police station. Yep. <laughs> so smart because, well, it was, yeah, it was two one ways, you know, so you had to go. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I remember each, some of these places vividly. Like, I remember getting in a fight there. Yeah. I remember a friend of mine getting his ass beat there. <laughs> in front of the Goodwill? Was it the Goodwill then? And, uh, no, I don't remember what it was. It used to be a, uh, a Safeway. A long time ago, this place had a Safeway, a Hinky Dinky. Did you guys have a Hinky Dinky? Well, what's a Hinky Dinky? It's a Safeway type grocery store. And then 6th Street, which was a, a local, but very popular and good grocery store. So that used to be the American Legion, which was by far the nicest place uh, in town to eat. But I don't know what happened to those. I think they, uh, they've all kind of just died. This not the one that the uh, van went in, no. Is this the Platte River here? This is the Platte River. Yeah. So the girls are going to be uh, ankle deep. Ankle deep in that today. Yep. So the Ramada Inn used to be a Holiday Inn Holodome. Oh, you remember those? those? Glorious. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it had the pool in the middle. And so Cassie and Troy had their wedding reception there. I had my wedding reception there. My sister had her her wedding reception there. It's like anybody that was anybody had their wedding reception at the, the Holodome. Yeah. So in 1980, when I was 10, uh, and Becky got married, uh, 
she uh, uh, her the, the rehearsal dinner was at the American Legion, and all of Carl's groomsmen kept feeding me whiskey sours. Ten. Ten. Yeah. It's a bad story. Then we go over to the Motel 6, which is right across the street, and my dad's old army buddy and his wife are in town. So we're sitting there, and I'm watching TV, and they're all visiting in the hotel room, and suddenly I'm like, blah, everywhere, and it just <laughs> reeked of whiskey. <laughs> and my mom was so appalled. <laughs> she was like, oh my God. But they kept grilling me. Where'd you get that booze? And I didn't say a word. I didn't rat out any of them. I am ten years old. You were good. I, I rat. I ratted them out uh, a year or so ago at a party where a bunch of them were. I ratted them out to my dad, and he thought that was pretty funny. But <laughs> yeah, what a crack up. Uh, anyway, the the next night was the wedding, and uh, it went late, of course. My dad was in a tuxedo. Everybody ends up in the pool other than my dad. Well, I don't know. My dad even got thrown in the pool. I mean, he can't swim. He wasn't happy about it. But uh, anyway, at four in the morning, he realizes he's forgotten to milk the cow. And so... But he doesn't drink, right? Would he? Occasionally. Like then, he had plenty to drink. Okay. okay. So the neighbor, who was absolutely, completely blotto, says, Oh, no, you're not driving out there. I'm driving you out there. So Gordon Gosnell drives him out there. My dad at 4.30 in the morning milks the cow in a tuxedo. <laughs> she never gave milk again. She was done. <laughs> it ruined her. It was all over right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw somebody's, we were all in a limo together and I saw too much. Dicey, uh, dicey. Yeah, that's something. that's gonna be cut. I mean, the, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? Not good. No, not great. No. Why? Oh, well, we're already popping breakers just with uh, LED lights on. No, you got Joel coming? Huh? Oh yeah, he's uh, he's coming. Holy shit. Yeah. So we got Joel coming. We got another load of holes coming. Oh wow, how'd you manage that? You know, Rex, I know a lot of people, dude. Wow. I know the same people you know. Plus more. <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah, with the north winds, the sound like they're gonna be strong. So yeah, we got I got another load. So Jack's going up there with the side dump section in and uh oh Dustin is arranging a couple hour loader to be there. Oh great. They will, uh, the, uh, yeah, I got the tables and chairs. Uh, I know, how, is Becky out there? Not yet. Okay. Just, yeah, sure. <laughs> he is going to be my father-in-law, and they set me up with their 7-Eleven, and then I will be set for the rest of my life. It is not a problem at all. <laughs> uh, I've been banned from the Paul family. <laughs> Doug is the only one who still talks to me. <laughs> Well, you have such a great uh, uh, Indian, I mean, dot Indian impression. I know. That it's hard not to talk like that if it comes up in conversation. Less than a year old, so eight, nine months old. We fly into Denver. There's no air service in the North Platte at the time. So we rent a car, has Colorado license plates, and we're driving. We get just this, this side of North Platte, and she starts bawling her head off. And Heidi and I are like, let's just go for it. Let's get to the ranch. So Heidi crawls in the back. She's trying to pacify Core Jane. And I'm doing 105 down the interstate. Take that corner, full boat. And we're just going all the way. And right before we hit the gravel roads, Heidi says, pull over so I can get in front and not get car sick. So I pull over. We take off again, and I see these cherry lights behind me. I'm like, oh, this must be an emergency. So I pull over. The guy comes squealing to a stop behind me, <laughs> jumps out to the state patrol, draws his gun, comes up heavy on this side, and I'm like, hello? <laughs> and he's like, what's going on? And I told him, and he's like, oh. Uh, and I'm like, uh, you know Jane Tooley? He goes, 
yeah? I go, well, she's my ex aunt, you know, and why don't you call her? She'll verify everything. Oh, and so he calls her. She was the first woman on the state patrol and she was the governor's guard at that point. Gets through it, everything's fine. There was a plane overhead. He calls off the five other cruisers that are coming from all over. Oh my. They thought we were drug runners. We <laughs> spotted the plane and that we stopped up here to dump all the, the drugs out. And uh, But once he heard the screaming baby, he's like, oh, maybe <laughs> it's, mind. yeah. Maybe. And uh, it, he did me a solid. He goes, I got to give you a ticket. And so he, the, you couldn't read what the speed was. And uh, so it, it eventually was just dismissed. And he did it on purpose. He was great. and set over here. It was uh, built in the 1850s and it was uh, to protect the settlers as they came across uh, from Indians, etc. We're at the confluence of territory and uh, you, there's, there, there's quite a lot of Indian activity here. And you're not talking from India? And I'm not, not talking East from, India? No, not East India. Not, 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 so not, not, not. this hill over here, they took a bunch of dirt from it last year or the last two years to fill in on the interstate and they found four cannonballs while they were doing it. Oh my god. Oh cool. Yeah. And that would be great. But unfortunately every one of these damn corners I have nightmares about because I remember riding with Joe Remus and we went whoop right off that one. Wow. But I have never missed this corner. Uh, my dad can tell you like the 23 people that have and went right in the canal. And then coming the other way is where Tucker missed the corner. So tell us where Tucker bought, bought uh, it. Tucker was coming high speed the other way, and he, he and yeah, and he couldn't make the corner, so he just comes over here and he can't do it, and he launched it right out there. How far did he fly? He was midway. Uh, yeah, he was like at the end of that point, and the van was completely submerged. They had to get a scuba diver out there to hook it up. And the best thing was is when when they drug it out the next day he went to the tow yard his wallet was still there and his phone was still there plugged in and his phone works <laughs> wow that's awesome that's amazing yeah that, is that is it an it's iPhone? an apple yeah iPhone. well there you go steve jobs Way yeah to go, buddy uh however many 15 years later they finally got one that's semi waterproof <laughs> so this they planted this to oats and then they didn't wait for it to, uh, you know, come to and use it as grain, so they cut it to use as hay. But as you can see, it's already started to turn. So yep. unless they chop it, most of that the cattle will not eat. If they chop it, it it's already lost most of its nutrition. So that was, so, that was the end. Yeah, there you go. Solid agricultural lessons here. <laughs> this is what not to do. And a rancher is a very difficult, very it's difficult. hard, hard work. It's hard to make money, I would think. When you have a really good year, everybody does, and the price drops. So at one point, you every year. So this was going to be the next half mile right here. They straightened this out. And they never did that. <laughs> so that, that was the end of that. So you can see just by the trees. These, uh, we used to have a, the same cedars that Oregon had, you know, big, tall, straight, and amazing cedars. Right. Well, they were all logged out by the Union Pacific when they built the railroad through here. Uh, uh, railroad time. And then these eastern scrub cedars, right. uh, they have become an invasive species. So there's all kinds of government programs to help you burn, trim, cut, you know, poison, because it just chokes out your ranch land yeah. to no end. So, they procreate like crazy, don't they? Yes. Yeah. When I was a little kid, there were there were no none of these here. Wow. Wow. I mean that. Yeah. That's that's impressive in a sad way. It, what was it? Uh, two years? Was it two years ago? A year ago? Whatever. We hit a cow up there, and <laughs> this gal inherited this piece of land. And she's a doctor in Kearney, and she just took cattle and pasture. Nobody ever fixed the fence. She's never even been out. Dodging the cows all the time, and then we're coming home at 
7.30 at night and then just come around the corner and boom, there's a cow in the middle of the road. So obviously, you know, banged up the car, etc. God, the car must have been... But I was so pissed. I'm texting Pat Hang. I said, Pat, I want this lawsuit filed by noon the next day. And he did it. So we're, we're still in court. We haven't even had one appearance. It's been over... Has she fixed her 14 fence? 14 months. Uh, no, she sold the land. Oh, look at that. A little box turtle. That guy was stopped there looking at him. Yeah, uh, I think the last year we burned close to 8,000 acres out here. Wow. We burned about half of our place. Oh, and that's so you'll, right. Shireen's cousin came. He's a government guy and he was yeah. out here for that burn. So. Tucker and Jen were with me and we were coming back from some party late at night. We come flying up over that thing, whoosh! I'm like, that was fun, turn around. We do about five times. We land the last time and the Cadillac goes into limp mode. 15 miles an hour from there to the ranch, then back to the return, rental car return <laughs> the next day. And I'm like, there's something wrong with this damn car. 